The Child's Play films are about a possessed good guy doll. In the films, the doll becomes possessed by serial killer and voodoo practitioner Charles Lee Ray, known as Chucky. In the movie, Andy wants a good guy doll for his birthday. So his mom buys a bootleg good guy doll from the back of the store in an alleyway and things go from bad to worse very, very quickly which is why you don't buy bootleg dolls in a back alley. The films are based on a real doll called Robert. This doll was one of a kind and originally owned by Robert Eugene Otto. There are many stories of how Robert received the doll. However, the most popular is that he got the doll from a woman who once worked for the family. The story goes she practiced voodoo and she devised the doll in order to exact revenge for the abuses she suffered at the hands of the family. Robert Eugene loved the doll so much, he referred to the doll as Robert and he, himself as Eugene. He would often blame the doll for things like the furniture being rearranged or broken toys. Eugene would say, Robert did it. There are many stories that Robert the doll could move around the house and express himself as if he were alive. There are even stories that Robert the doll could blink his eyes and run around with an evil laugh. Mr. Otto eventually moved away from his childhood home in Florida. After his parents died, Otto inherited the home. Robert Eugene brought his wife to live in his childhood home. Robert the doll was waiting for him. The pair rekindled their friendship, much to the dismay of his wife, who felt that Robert Eugene was, quote, too attached to the doll. When Mr. Otto died in 1974, the house was purchased by Myrtle Reuter. The house came with Robert the doll. She claimed the doll moved around on its own and other strange reports. She donated the doll to the Fort East Martello Museum in Key West, Florida. People flocked to see the doll. Some even send letters and gifts. It has been reported that those who disrespect Robert have fallen victim to misfortunes and bad luck. The movie Annabelle is nothing like the true story. In the movie, the doll is given to a woman for her doll collection by her husband. Things go from bad to worse fairly quickly. The actual story of Annabelle is told at the beginning of The Conjuring. The real story of Annabelle dates back to 1970 when a 28-year-old nurse received the Raggedy Ann doll for her birthday from her mom. She put the doll on her bed and she began noticing the doll would change positions. She claimed the doll would have a leg crossed or, or it would be laying on its side. The nurse and her roommate began to find parchment paper on the floor with messages written on it. Some of the messages were, help me, help us. The women claimed there was no parchment paper in the house. They claimed the doll also began appearing in different rooms of the house. At one point, the doll even began leaking blood. At first, the women thought that an intruder was moving the doll and leaving the notes. Once they ruled that out, they contacted a medium and a seance was held. Reportedly, during the seance, the spirit of a seven-year-old girl who had lived on the property before the apartments were built, named Annabel Higgins, made contact. The child had died on the property at age seven. Apparently, the spirit told the medium she felt comfort with the two roommates and, quote, wanted to stay with them and be loved, end quote. This caused the women to give the spirit permission to inhabit the doll. This only made things worse. Ed and Lorraine Warren took an interest in the case and contacted the women. According to the Warren's website, the couple concluded, quote, that the doll itself was not in fact possessed, but manipulated by an inhuman presence. The website continues, truly, the spirit was not looking to stay attached to the doll. It was looking to possess a human host. The Warrens took the doll home taking care to avoid the highway. 
Ed even had to sprinkle the doll with holy water to calm it down. Today, the doll is held in a locked glass case at Warren's Occult Museum with a warning sign that reads, Do Not Touch. Vacancy stars Luke Wilson and Kate Beckinsale as a married couple on the verge of divorce. On their way home from a family party on a remote mountain road, their car breaks down. With nothing around or open, they check into the only motel available. The motel clerk is clearly a creeper and the room hasn't been remodeled or cleaned since 1972. Once their motel door closes, the situation escalates immediately and it's nonstop from there. I watched the movie before I made this video. I've seen it before, but I had forgotten how annoying and frankly not a team player Kate Beckinsale's character is. I guess some people just aren't good in a crisis. Despite this annoyance, it's a really good movie and you should check it out. Married couple Gerald and Donna Foos purchased a small 21-room motel just outside of Denver. Mr. Foos wrote a letter to the New Yorker's Gay Tales who published part of the letter in an article he wrote for the New Yorker in 2016. According to the letter, which was dated January 7, 1980, Mr. Foos purchased the motel because he wanted to, quote, satisfy my voyeuristic tendencies and compelling interest in all phases of how people conduct their lives, both socially and sexually. I did this purely out of my unlimited curiosity about people and not just as a deranged voyeur, end quote. Mr. Foos and his wife, Donna, cut rectangular holes measuring 6 by 14 inches in the ceilings of more than a dozen rooms. Foos covered the openings with a louvered aluminum screens that looked like ventilation grills. They were not for ventilation. Foos used these to observe the guests in the room while he knelt in the attic. He even kept detailed notes of everything he observed that spanned decades. In all of the years Foos did this, he was never caught. The couple even managed to keep their secret from Donna's mother. According to Gerald, the couple would wait until his mother-in-law was asleep before sneaking into the attic. Eventually, Gerald grew tired of simply watching people have sex. Mr. Foos concocted an honesty test. Gerald would have a suitcase locked by a cheap padlock in the closet of a motel room. A guest would check in and Gerald, with an earshot of the guest, would tell Donna that someone had just called to report leaving behind a suitcase with $1,000 in it. He would then climb into the attic and watch the guests find the suitcase and deliberate what to do next. There were 15 guests subjected to this honesty test. Guests included a minister, lawyer, and an army lieutenant colonel. Only two guests returned the suitcase with the padlock untouched. The rest opened the suitcase and then tried to dispose of it. The minister pushed it out of the bathroom window and into the bushes. Foos even observed a murder. A small-time drug dealer and his girlfriend were staying at the motel. Foos snuck into the room and flushed the drugs down the toilet. The dealer blamed his girlfriend and strangled her to death, all while Foos watched. The maid discovered her body the next day and reported it to police. Foos sold the motel in 1995. The motel has since been demolished. Apparently, Foos wasn't satisfied with just simply leaving the light on for you. 